So it's been a little while since we've seen the Sunderland save. So following on from the last time we seen this save, we then went away from home against Chelsea and 1-1-0. Lewis Montagnier with the only goal of the game in the 84th minute, in a game where Chelsea probably deserved the win. Next up was a 3-1 home win against Wolves. Oliver Batista Maya with a brace, Abdul Kadir Omar with the other, and Raul Jimenez did put them in from two minutes in, but we dominated after that. We then went away from home against Bournemouth and 1-3-2. Patrick Juzek, our backup Polish defensive midfielder, got the opening goal of the game. Esposito got a brace in this one as well. And despite some comebacks from Bournemouth, we were definitely the better side on the day. And finally was a 0-0 home draw against Manchester United, which takes us into the final two games of the season. And this is how the Premier League table stands. We currently sit in third position, four points clear from fifth place Newcastle United. So a win a day in either of these final two fixtures and we have ourselves Champions League football for next season. Bit of a random place to come back to a series. Uh, I did realise that once I started recording, but uh, you know, people wanted to see the Sunderland save continue and obviously being a Sunderland fan, I was more than happy to oblige. So this is probably going to be it for the rest of the FM20 game cycle. We will be continuing on with Sunderland, just seeing how far we can take them making them European heavyweights, which I've no doubt we can do, winning the Premier League and then seeing how far we can push that to the limit. Our final two games of this season then, which is our third season in charge of Sunderland, our first in the Premier League. Watford away from home comes up first, then Leeds United at home to round out the season. So this will be the lineup for the first game. Jack Butland, of course, our number one starting in goal. Nissan Christensen and Josh Tymon being our wing-backs. Josh Tymon obviously had a massive injury this season. It's severely hampered his development and typically Munoz has been our starter based on the attributes. But I'm going to get Josh Tymon back involved in the squad, hopefully try to rehabilitate him for this last couple of games. Benoit Badiashiel won't be starting. Benjamin Clark will be starting. He's one of our regens who started at Sunderland and I'm giving him as much game time as possible this season. He started 21 Premier League games and five off the bench. And I'll probably look to loan him out next season, give him some championship football, something that's a little more suited to his level and hopefully he can come back to us the season after that, a ready first-team starter. He will be partner Newan Perez in the centre-half uh, center positions. Unfortunately for us, George Dobson is injured for today's game, so Jizek, is Jizek going to start or is Matthias Jakobsen? Matthias Jakobsen is going to start in defensive midfield. I am training him now to become natural in the defensive midfield role. He's already natural at centre-back and centre-midfield, so let's increase his versatility there. And with Jizek being a lone player as well, I'm not too interested in starting him all the time. Bally Mumba can start in central midfield. Abdul Kadir Omar and Oliver Batista Meyer as our wingers. Sergio Gomez playing in his behind. Sebastiano Esposito. Now, in terms of Esposito, I have been trying. I've been trying all the time to get in at Milan to potentially offer us a decent enough deal. I mean, I would happily pee over the odds to bring in Esposito. But they're talking hundreds of millions. Um, so Esposito, it's unlikely he'll be a Sunderland player next season. But that's for the summer transfer window, which of course will be coming up in the next episode. Looking at this Watford squad then, it's a pretty standard Watford squad. Cabaselia, Shalaba, Decoria, Will Hughes, Delafio, Pereira, João Pedro, of course, is a fantastic striker. 20 years old Brazilian. We'll have to be careful of him. But we're in some good run of form and hopefully we can get the win a day to secure European football. First highlight of the game comes 10 minutes in. We win the ball after a poor goal kick from their keeper. Abdul Kadir Omar brings a forward, gets dispossessed, but he holds on to it. He goes for goal. Ooh, ended up being a better strike than I thought it was going to be. Being a bit of a quiet first half hour, uh, neither side really taking control, but we have ourselves another highlight. Sergio Gomez spreading the play at this left-hand side time and plays it in. Batista Maya with a header. Was never really troubling the goalkeeper that one. Come on, lads. 32 minutes in. Get the opening goal of the game. Jakobsen gives the ball away to Shalaba. Bally Mumba can't win it. Thankfully, Benjamin Clark's on hand to dispossess. And Esposito is in behind now. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And it's a decent save by Baddy Yashil in goal for Watford. We'll stick with the corner. It'll be Batista Maya, the man who takes it. And goes all the way through. Watford get it clear. Five minutes to go before the end of the first half. I have, we have been dominant in this game. And I'm hoping we can get ourselves... 1-0 up in front before half-time. Um, <laughs> not 1-0 down, lads, are we? But there we have it then. Watford nil, Sunderland nil. Despite a decent first half by ourselves, we haven't been able to take our chances. I'm telling the boys I'm far from pleased and hopefully that can give them a kick up the arse that they need. Free kick for Watford. Delafio is over the top of it. Decent header, but Butland claims it easily. Is that the end of the highlight or is it going to continue? It is going to continue. Sergio Gomez finds Omar 
on this right hand side. He's dashing down. He plays it back to Rasmus Nissen Christiansen who can't get past to Coria, who sets over uh, sets away Gerard Delafio on this left hand side. He cuts in, beats two. He's in the box. Goes wide. Oh, well, lads. Another highlight now. Omar on the ball on the right hand side once again. Jakobsen plays it back to Perez who long ball over the top is beautiful. Espacito's shots block Gomez. Fantastic save by Badia Shale. Goes out for a Watford goal. Did I hit the post? I must have hit the post. I was sure Sergio Gomez had almost put us 1 0 up front there. Half an hour to go. We are on top. We need to find that breakthrough. Omar finds Sergio Gomez back to Christensen. Switches the play to Josh Tymon. Now that would have made up for his injury. I'm telling you that. Another corner now. Sergio Gomez plays it. It goes all the way through once again. But we can't quite take advantage of it. And that's going to be that. Let's make some changes. We're going to bring on Luis Montenegro for Sebastiano Esposito up top. He hasn't had the greatest game so far. In terms of our other attacking options, we don't really have many. We're going to bring on Marchinski. Who are we going to take off though? It's probably going to be Omar. I haven't seen enough from him on that right-hand side. He's lost the ball a couple of times and even though he's been involved in the play in general, it hasn't quite resulted in what we wanted. There's Josh Tymon picking himself up. Another injury will bring him off and bring on Ehen Munoz in his place. We're really going to have to think about a new left back for next season, which is disappointing. Um, I was banking on the likes of Josh Tymon being our guy for maybe a couple of seasons as Philippe Marchinski comes off the bench and gets his third goal of the season to put us 1 0 up with only 10 minutes remaining. Sergio Gomez with another assist from a set piece. And Marchinski does brilliant there to beat the goalkeeper and the defender. Nine minutes to go, 1 0. And now we have a boys, Watford 0, Sunderland 1. We win our first game of today. And you know what that means. We have Champions League football. It is coming to Sunderland next season. The summer transfer window is about to get a lot more interest and hopefully the, bo the board reward us quite heavily for being able to get uh, continental football in our first season. Let's see what they've said. Board set initial budgets. Come on. What, what, what am I wanting? What's our finances look like? 37 million. Let's see. It goes up to 100. Uh, 50. 50 million. I've, I've already just seen it there. 56, of course, I have. 56 million quid, 750k in the wages. Obviously, that's not a great amount. Uh, just ignore all these inactive deals. 56 million pound. It leaves us with 134,000 pounds available in the wages. But we do have to make some significant improvements to the squad, particularly the likes of Esposito, who may or may not end up making it at Sunderland. So for our final game of the season, the only change to our starting 11 from the last game is George Dobson returns to the defensive midfield position in terms of Matthias Jakobsen, and then I'm going to put Jakobsen in central midfield over Bally Mumba. Leeds United are the challenger today. We are playing at home. Um, they're playing a 4-2-3-1. Any particularly familiar names here? Alfie McCalmont, Harrison. Let's have a look at a couple of these regions. Tompkins, 19 years old. He looks decent, um, but nothing really that special. And Lewis Wharton. He looks okay as well, but it looks like they're playing the youngsters there. They're pretty much um, they're finishing in 15th uh, this season, it looks like. So, a wonder kid Japanese left winger as well. Looks like they're doing okay for themselves. But if we are to win a day, by the way, we will finish on 77 points for the season and as, as a newly promoted side. That would put us in second place in Yo-Yo Man. One point behind Leeds United. So, just a little bit of a tidbit of information. But, of course, we do need to win this game as Harrison comes forward for Leeds United and goes for goal and scores. Beating Jack Butland at his near post. His fourth goal of the season. Joe Tompkins, the regen we took the piss out of, getting the assist there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Aye, that was a great start. I'm not sure how Jack Butland lets this get in the back of his net. Let's see it again. Harrison, it is a stinging strike and it hits Jack Butland's face. I mean, that's what your gloves are for, Jack. You put, put them in front of the ball. I think they know that we're going to get close to their record so they don't want us to do it. As Benjamin Clark goes close from a Gomez free kick. We need a few more opportunities like that, please. Gomez again, another free kick. He plays it in back post. It's cleared by Leeds United. And it's going to be a counter-attacking opportunity for them, surely. They've sort of played it too slow. Um, you would have thought they would have been able to burst with pace there. Thankfully, they end up giving the ball back and we win it. Abdul Qadir, Omar, Tim, uh, Matthias Jakobsen. Lovely player down to Rasmus Nissen. Christian Sern and Esposito. This might be his final game in a Sunderland shirt. And he gets his 30th goal of the season. Nissen Christiansen with the assist from that right hand side. He's been very, very effective, Rasmus has. And uh, we go and level things up. 25 minutes in. Great play by Jakobsen to find Christiansen. It's a lovely cross to the front post. And Esposito's on hand 
with his clinical finishing. Another highlight now, Sergio Gomez picks up the ball on the left-hand side from Josh Timey. He plays it back to him. Batista Meyer, Dobson, Christiansen goes for goal and that is a brilliant finish. His second goal of the season and he's set a goal and an assist for today's game. So nice play on the left-hand side, working it over nice and patiently. Leeds got plenty of men back as you can see but we just work around them. Dobson finds the killer ball, great first touch, great finish to the back post. And we find ourselves 2 on up. Oh, Harley Johnson in the centre of midfield is a little bit tasty for Leeds United. Very well-rounded English 19-year-old wonder kid. As we get ourselves another free kick shortly before half-time. Benjamin Clark again with their win in the header but not quite getting it on target. There will be one final highlight before the referee calls an end to this first half. Esposito is in behind. He's not offside. And Esposito gets his 31st goal of the season. His second goal of today's game. And he puts us 3-1 up just to be... I'm going to miss Sebastiano. I don't know if I can deal. I might need to just sell the whole entire squad just to bring in Esposito on a permanent transfer. Lone Dale's out of the window now. He's too good for Inter Milan not to consider him a first-team player. So the only way we are to get him back into our Sullen squad is on a permanent deal. First highlight of the second half comes 50 minutes in. George Dobson plays it all the way back to Benjamin Clark. Got a lot of space on that left-hand side, George, if you want to find them. But he switches it to the right, Omar, back to Dobson. He switches the play to Batista Maya on this left-hand side. He's got Josh Timon overlap and he gets past his man. Whips it in, Esposito, hat-trick. Of course it is. It's his final game, probably. Of course he gets himself a hat-trick. He's 32nd goal of the season. Bear in mind, we haven't been in Europe. You know, it's all domestic, really. I don't even think we got... Did we get far in the Cups? I don't think we did. So I think the vast majority of these goals are coming in the Premier League from Esposito. He is truly special. So Leeds started off fantastically, but they've very quickly just went down the toilet, basically. Josh Timon, can he get himself a goal? It's a decent strike, but not on target. 20 minutes left, we'll look to make some changes. Nissan Christensen's had a great game, but he's on a yellow card, so we'll get Ballymumba on for him at right back. We'll bring off Esposito, get his uh, round of applause, his stand innovation for his hat-trick in today. And we'll bring on Felix Correa on that right-hand side for Abdul Kadir Omar. Another highlight now, Josh Timon bombing down the left. Ah, oh, he tries to play it to Felix Correa, but it's cleared. Benjamin Clark picks it up. Bali Mumba's there. Ah, oh, he cannot quite get the cross in. But Sergio Gomez picks up the ball, finds Luis Montenegro. And maybe Luis Montenegro, who's the man who will have to step up in replace of Sebastiano Esposito. That's what he was brought in for. Um, to play as back up to Esposito with the view of potentially becoming our first choice striker. And that's only his second goal of the season. He has got plenty of game time off the bench and he hasn't really done it so far. Um, maybe he just needs more starts under his belt to be able to unlock his full potential. We know what he can do. We he done it at Barnsley for us before. 5-1 up with only a couple of minutes to go. We have ourselves another highlight. George Dobson switching the player to Felix Correa. He's got uh, Bally Mumba on the right-hand side, but it's a poor ball in the end. Looks like Leeds might be on the counter-attack down this left-hand side. Igagami, the Japanese wonder kid, gets into the box, but he can't quite get his shot past Jack Butland. Three minutes remain, and uh, surely this game is over. And there we have a boys, Sunderland 5, but Leeds United 1. Esposito Hatrick, a perfect way to finish a perfect season uh, in the first season in the Premier League. Let's go see how the final Premier League table looks. So there is the final Premier League table. We and Newcastle United, both newly promoted sides, by the way, get third and fourth and get Champions League football for next season. Man United, Man City, Spurs and Chelsea all missing out on Champions League football. Liverpool, though, are looking pretty unstoppable at the moment. 99-point season, almost breaking the 100-point barrier, only beating off Everton, Leicester and Arsenal this season, all the way from home. That will be a massive, massive challenge to try and topple them. Classy Esposito on form. So let's have a look at Esposito then. This might be the very final time we get to do so. 35 Premier League games he started. 28 goals, 1 assist, 9 player of the matches, a 7.37 average rating. Just an absolutely unbelievable player. If any of you get the opportunity to use him, particularly whilst he's young, I would definitely take it up uh, and try and pinch him from Inter Milan before he gets too good. He's, he's too good now. He's valued at 22 million. Inter Milan are going to want a hefty feeder for us to be able to bring him in. And uh, I think we're just going to have to say goodbye. Looking through the rest of the squad then and thoughts and feelings for next season. Sergio Gomez is an absolute wonder star. Five goals and 13 assists from a tap midfield in 36 Premier League games. A 7.38 average rating. We of course got him locked down on a long-term deal. Another four years still left on it. No minimum fee release clause. No 
European club release clause or anything. So he will be a Sunderland player for as long as we want him to be. And um, valued at 30 million, he's just a special, special player. And he's really in a system that doesn't usually favour the attacking midfielder. He has made that position his own. George Dobson's done well in his first season in the Premier League. Probably someone who we will have to try and replace within the first 11. He's not quite at the required level, at least in terms of his attributes. But he's performed well this season. 33 appearances, 3 assists, 7.18 average rating in defensive midfielders. Not too shabby. Matthias Jakobsen similarly has come in and pretty much made that central midfield spot his own. Whether it's his own come next season is up for debate. Probably not. I might even try and loan him out for next season. 24 Premier League starts, 3 goals, 2 assists, 7.06 average rating. You can't really complain with that. Josh Tymon spoke about him earlier. Proper ruined his season, that injury. He was out, I think it was just 6 months. Was it 6 months? Where is it? 6 months, yeah. Uh, major damage cruciate ligaments. He's, he's had another couple of injuries since then as well. So we've probably got a little bit of a sick note on our hands. We won't look to sell him probably. We'll just look to maybe replace him within the first 11. Have him be a backup player. And that is disappointing to see one of you young English lads just sort of just ruin himself <laughs> through injury. Benjamin Clark's next. Spoke about him earlier. I will probably try and loan him out. His attributes, whilst obviously improving whilst getting first team football, haven't really improved all that much. If we go to, I mean, he's... <laughs> It has. All time, it has very, very much improved. But um, whilst he's been getting first-team football, I haven't been noticing him performing that well in training or like being a standout performer. So I'm thinking maybe something a little more suited to his current ability rather than the Premier League football that we've been giving him, which of course means we'll need to sign a centre-half in the summer. Nissan Christiansen is wanted by a couple of clubs, Leicester and Real Sociedad, I would be interested in selling, but only for a ridiculous fee and as long as we can find ourselves a similarly capable right back to be able to replace him, I would be fine with that. Now, when Perez is going to be a centre-half of ours for a very, very long time, I know he develops per brilliantly. He already looks like a top centre-half to me, incredibly well-rounded, and his mentals are fantastic. For someone as young as him, that is not something you'll often see. The only concern for me is his pace, 12 pace, we play quite a high line. Um, so as long as we've got a centre half next to him who can maybe accommodate that a little bit more because his acceleration's fine, all of his other physicals are fine, 13 strength's not great either, but um, he's a top centre half and he will be for a long time coming. Abdel Kadir Omar, um, our right winger. I don't really like him. He hasn't really performed well enough for me. 33 appearances, 7 goals and 5 assists. Batista Maia has done better on that left hand side. Um, Sergio Gomez has done better through the centre. Esposito has done well through the middle. Um, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Batista Maia, what did he get? Five goals and six assists with a higher higher average rating. And I, obviously with his versatility as well, he brings that to the table. And I just enjoy him a bit more. I just enjoy watching him play. He's a set-piece specialist whenever Sergio Gomez isn't on the pitch. And I just like him more than I like um, Abdul Kadir Omar. So I'm thinking for next season, goalkeeper, if we can. If not, Jack Butland will be fine for another season. Left back, I think, is a necessity. Centre back is a necessity. Defensive midfield, probably. Um, Centre midfield, maybe. Right wing, definitely. And striker, if we can't get Esposito, it will have to be done. Now, we've only got £56 million to do that. And we're going to have to probably wheel and deal and sell some players to be able to get a lot of those deals done. But it's something I'm going to do over the course of this, season, uh, this summer. And, uh, well, I've got a lot of scout reports and stuff to go through. So I'm going to finish things off here. Fantastic first season in charge of Sunderland. I'm fully expecting us to not do as well next season. We've got European football. Second season syndrome is a thing. <laughs> I truly believe it is a thing. So I'm hoping to fight for Champions League football again. But I wouldn't be surprised if we just narrowly missed out. But we can't take away from this season's achievements. It's been absolutely fantastic but anyway boys if you are looking forward to the rest of this sun and save please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy